I think we could do a, an entire show just on not just Stu Unger, maybe maybe even the Stu Unger project, which you know, for, for a first time author, that was as challenging, I think, a a, a book as, as anyone could have written. Particularly because you know my subject matter died in the midst of, of writing it, and something that I certainly didn't foresee. Even though I think that Stu even predicted he would live something like 45, 50 years, and he did die at age 45. That being said, I, I uh, at the time I was writing for Card Player Magazine, and this is just as the internet was starting, you know, in the mid mid 90s, and you know the internet was wasn't what it, of course it is today, and there were no poker websites at the time, and pretty much Card Card Player Magazine was it. And all the other writers for Card Player had books out, and mostly on strategy and this and that. And a lot of people came to me, and they, I guess they liked a lot of the stuff I was doing back then, and they said, no, why, why don't you write a book? And I, I think that people that are, are creative out there and, and into the arts will understand this, that you cannot force art. You cannot force creativity. It must be a spark that I think comes from a passion or something from within. And when I went to the 1997 World Series of Poker, and I've been to many of them, I watched Stu Unger rehabilitate himself and make this incredible comeback. Considering his deterioration in, in the early to mid-90s where to, virtually everyone had written him off. I mean, he was almost, really was a pathetic figure and to come back and, and, and win that tournament the way he did and, and reestablish the aura uh, that, that, that he once had what was, was simply the word is storybook. And so it came to me at that time to, I said, this is the story. This is the book. This is this is the moment that I, I wanted to latch on to. And over the next, well, year to 18 months, I got to know Stewie a lot better than I did at the time initially, where we spent a lot of time together. And I saw Stewie in, in times that were probably not, not flattering to him and his image and his, you know, with him, the way that I think a lot of people would like to remember him. But in, in, in a way, I, I think the book is a testament to, to the real person that he was. I don't think it glosses over things and certainly does not romanticize the lifestyle that he lived. I think it just told it like it was. And if, there, if, if there's anything that I, I, I'm proud of, uh, about this book is that I don't um, I don't preach a sermon about about Stewie. I let the the reader make up their own minds about and make their own judgments about the mistakes and the greatness and certainly the flaws uh, of of the life of Stu Unger. You know, Mike Sexton said in the eulogy that he wanted people to remember Stu for his greatness at the table and not his troubles off it. Wanted to ask you, should we do that? Should we simply forget the degenerate that he was? And simply hold them up to maybe the greatest ever? Should we forget all that bad stuff? That, that's a wonderful question. And, and, and frankly, anyone who knows me knows I am completely of the mindset of, of telling it like it is. I do not, I repeat, I do not want to glamorize or accentuate some of the positives because that's just, that's just BS. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's, especially in a biography, you've really got to show the entire portrait of the person. And I think that to, to a large extent, myself and my co-author, Peter Olson, accomplished that. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of political analogies. I mean, there, there, there's, a, there's a thing about, like, when people die. There's this, this, I don't know where this comes from, but don't dishonor the dead. Or when someone dies, they, for whatever reason, we have this mentality that let's not speak ill of the dead. Even if it's a horrible person, even if it's a person that was responsible for horrible things, and there's there's a lot of times of history that this has happened, we, we, we gloss over that. I don't like glossing over any of that. I think that's the time to reflect on someone's life fully. The good, the bad, the ugly, bring it all out. I mean, what, and, and by the way, it is responsibility of a writer, of a journalist, of, of somebody like you who interviews people. It's their responsibility to get it out there. That's what we do. I mean, we're not we're not press agents for these people, and, and, and they're trying to gloss over and BS people in, in, into you know into, into, a, into this idolatry. I, I don't believe in that at all. So so my my, my philosophy is, is quite the opposite, and putting things out there, warts and all. And again, I, I think that in, in a sense, even the things that uh, that were uh, troubling about Stewie and the flaws that he had, I think that in a way makes him. I say I think a more endearing figure, a more, a more sympathetic figure, even. So I really respect people who are willing to put it out there. And everybody's so worried about their image, and they want to be known this way. And I always like people who say, you know, here's what I did wrong, or here's something I did that was stupid, or boy, I sure do regret this moment. And then I, I think, frankly, those are the things that we, as observers, can learn a hell of a lot more from. Are those moments, not the moments when they're winning world championships or conquering the world. 